What's up guys, this is one part of an eight part series of my first listen of the concept album The Wall by Pink Floyd. What I'll be trying to do is explore the themes and the music as I hear them. Hope you guys enjoy the experience. Here we go, the happiest days of our lives, straight on from the previous track. I love the transitions on this thing. Each song sort of bleeds into the next. We've had that in almost every song so far. They just bleed into each other. Oh, it's got a great beat to it. We grew up and went to school. There were certain teachers who would hurt the children any way they could. By pouring their derision upon anything we did. Exposing every weakness, however carefully hidden by the kid. This is crazy, right? One of the tracks, singular tracks that I reviewed on my album, it was another Brick in the Wall part two, I believe. People were saying how bad the school system was um, in England during the 40s and the 50s where, where these guys grew up, which um, is really hard to hear, man, uh, or sad to hear at least, like how horrible apparently it was and like how teachers could beat you up. It's crazy. It reminds me of how my parents grew up in Bangladesh where the teachers were very violent, very strict, um, you know, corporal punishment was a, was a very widely used thing. Um, we also have from the previous track, right, all these helicopter noises is daddy's flown across the ocean. So leaving just a memory. So he's like kind of recalling uh, his father's life constantly. It seems to be a constant shadow that has been cast on his life. Um, no matter what happens, he kind of refers back to his dad not being there anymore as a sort of foundation for all the things that are happening to him he seems to have put a lot of blame on his father um in terms of like being a um uh a analysis of a human being you know you would say that he's certainly got some some uh parental uh issues that he needs to like clear up essentially let's keep this thing going though Great beat and groove to this we thing. Don't need no thoughts control. No dark sarcasm in the classroom. Teach and leave them kids alone. It's awesome to now hear this within the context of the album and where we are. It's clearly like going almost chronologically in terms of time. And to hear like, okay, we're still in the childhood of Waters or whoever the character that is uh, this album being sort of a uh, point of view from. To hear the issues that he had at home. Now also his nightmare continues in the education system with these psychopathic teachers who seem to be uh attacking the children's weaknesses as he describes it what a crazy way to describe it as well it's like he's a uh, he's sort of being hunted by these people however carefully hidden by the kid amazing now they're fat and psychopathic wives who thrash them within inches of their lives so the paint the picture is being painted from the lyrics the music is this dark reality it's almost like a fantasy that he's created from his childhood about 
the scenes he witnessed, you know, the world that he was existing in was kind of terrible. It wasn't set up for people to um, become normal, productive members of society, essentially. But makes for great music. Ever so light guitar licks. All in all, you're just, a just about here. In the wall. We don't need no education. We don't need no full control. So in the track review, people were saying this is actually a double negative. We don't need no education, meaning we don't need a lack of education. I don't see it like that. As someone who's obviously a Brit, you know, there's just a form of speak. You know, we don't need no education. It's just how someone would say it. I think that was probably a someone from the States who was saying that. I still think it means kids saying like this education system is not for me we don't need this we don't need this thought control because the double negative thing wouldn't work right in the next bit we don't need no thought control the double negative would mean we do need thought control maybe maybe that is the point interesting i mean hey it's, inter it's up to your interpretation maybe the person is so brainwashed that he's saying that we do need it um we need guidance we need our brains to be washed Great drone in the back. I love the way Gilmore spaces or times the licks, the times the notes. He goes from a long note to a short note into a sort of break. I don't know what the, the technical terminology is, but then he'll add these little bits where he's like uh, fiddling with the notes and the way it comes in and out of the beat. I mean, in, in hip hop, we call it flow. When you do it with your lyrics, you, you specifically choose to put certain words certain rhymes around the beat to make it more impactful and Gilmore certainly does that he the way he spaces his eye he suddenly leave a, a rest a note uh, no notes at all and let the beat come back in and then he'll come back with the guitar it's fantastic the way he does it Oh my god, that sounds terrifying, man. 
We've got a museum near us. It's called the Ragged, the Ragged Edge School. It's like a, a museum you can go see how kids in East London went to school, and it looks terrible, man. Absolutely, it's terrible. Terrible conditions. Here we go. This Why is Mother. You think they'll drop the bomb? Whoa. Mother, do you think they'll like this song? <laughs> Do you think they'll try to break my balls? Ooh, ah, mother should I build the wall? Mmm, that's deep. This is clearly someone looking for guidance, right? And it's interesting the things he's asking. He is such there's like a curious little kid who doesn't know where to go. Do you think they like this song? He's unsure of himself. Do you think they dropped the bomb? His curiosity. Will they break my balls? Mom, I'm scared. What are they gonna make fun of me? Should I build the wall? Wow, that's deep, man. Mother, should I run for president? Should I trust the government? song and it's kind of um uh, disguised that sort of a sweet sentimental track about mother you'd think this would be like an ode to his mother but it's really not he's talking about the sort of circumstances and situations that might create someone who's unbalanced right a kid who's unsure doesn't have his father around he's looking for um guidance through his mother's wisdom he even says should i build a wall he's unsure should i put a, a barrier between me and other people and then his, mo his mother, who is played by the voice of Gilmore, um, responds. And what she says isn't useful to him at all. It's actually the total opposite. She's going to put all her problems and all her issues onto him. Mama's going to put all her fears into you. Mama's going to keep you right here under her wing. This is what happens to, to guys, to boys, essentially, right? Where you get babied too much and you don't end up becoming a man. You're never able to come out of the, the shadows, the wings of, of your parents. Deep stuff, man. Ooh, babe. Ooh, babe. Ooh, babe. Of course, mama's gonna help me on the wall. Feel more solos, man. It's like we're floating, floating away. Mother, do you 
you think she's good enough? I love the concept of this song, man. This is such a brilliant song. This is like a call and response, right? You have the kid, the child version of this guy who asking his mother all these things out of his insecurities. His mother responds with some terrible, with a terrible response. And at the end of it, right, one of the bits is he asks her, um, you know, shall I build a wall? Mother, should I build this wall? And she does respond, Mom is gonna help you build the wall. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna provide the bricks for it, my love, just the way your father did. Oh, great keys again. Sprinkling in. Hush, my baby, baby, don't you cry. Sounds like a flute in the background. This is a toxic relationship, man. What a fantastic line to end this, man. The wit, the wit of the writing in this and the whole sort of irony that exists in this track, right, is presented in this disguise of this beautiful lullaby or even a song dedicated to his mother. Really, when you look into the lyrics of this thing, it's dark, it's very dark about this toxic relationship he has with his mother, who's supposed to be his protector, but only ends up putting all of her issues and her problems onto this young man. Um, especially when he turns into a young man, the issue is his mother still sees him as a baby. You'll always be my baby to me. And meaning it doesn't allow this boy to grow up. Like she's in his, in his, uh, business in a way that is not healthy, man. Mama won't let any, anyone dirty get through. It's the idea that your mother doesn't want you to feel any pain. But really in life, what makes a man strong is going through hardships. That's really what it is. And this kind of creates a grown kind of babies you know men who are man childs essentially um i love the writing in this thing and so far in the story this will be the the ending of part two of the series of videos so far the paint the pictures that have been painted so far are, are very very disturbing i'd say the life that and situations that this young man has been put into is still very young the world is coming to is is terrifying it's horrific his education system is out to get him. He's born into a situation where his father's died and there's, there's no one there to protect him. And his mother has these issues within herself that she's putting onto this young man. So the environment is not set up for him to, to succeed, essentially. Um, very interesting, man. Music has been brilliant. This was a very turn in the music. We've gone a sort of acoustic. So let's see where we go next. <laughs> 